Good morning, and welcome to Grace Community Church's virtual service. And we hope that you're having a good day today, and we absolutely are. Thank you for being with us. We love producing these videos for you guys, and we hope that you can enjoy this. Sit back, sing, relax, pray with us, and uh, good morning, and God bless. Father, we often pray that we want to have a closer walk with you, but what does that really mean? What does that really uh, mean that it needs from us? What, what kind of commitment and change do we have to make in our life to have a closer walk with you? Um, Father, sometimes I think we say things, we ask for things, and we don't really understand the gravity of what those requests mean. There is something required of us, Father, faith, to ask and seek and knock in faith, to be committed in our heart, to repent, to ask for forgiveness, to live out the life that Jesus lived when he was on earth. I think, Father, that sometimes we just need to evaluate what is required of us to have what we want when we want that closer walk with you. Father, I ask for forgiveness for the times that we've not walked close. And I ask for forgiveness for the times, Father, we've been superficial and reckless in our love for you. Father, we, we just want to love you the way that you deserve. And I know that's not possible because we're human, but I know that because of the sacrifice of Jesus, because of his blood, 
I believe that we can, Father, truly give you our whole heart and soul. It's only in those moments where we let Jesus completely envelop and take over and we decrease. And Father, I just pray that you would help teach your children what that means. Everybody in this church, everybody watching this video, the world over, Father, we just we want to see your glorious will be done. Thank you for the days that we've been given. Thank you for the days that we have allocated left to our life that you've given us. And Father, every day we will praise you. We will praise you, and if we don't, we ask for forgiveness. And we know it'll be there because we know your promises are sure. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me as we pray for today's offering for Mother's Day. And perhaps if you want to remember your grandma or one of your favorite aunts or your mom, if they've already gone into eternity, perhaps it'd be a good thing to remember them by giving an offering in their name and say this I'm doing for the sake of the memory of my mother or for the honor of my mother. So let's, let's do that. It's, it's, not, it's not a tactic that I'm using to try to get money from you. It's just a thought that I had. So let's do that. Lord, thank you 
for our mothers and our fathers and our grandfathers and our grandmothers, for our aunts and our uncles, for our families. Help us, Lord, to honor our mother and our father and our family. There's been so much vitriol in family life and breakup and all of that. And it's hard to try to make sense of it all, but help us even if we have divorces, even if we have acrimony, even if we've had falling out with family members. Help us, Lord, to realize that for the sake of my family, for the sake of my children, for the sake of my grandchildren, I need to have peace and have peaceful relationships with all of my family so that there's nothing in the way of any of my family members, especially my children or myself, so that there's no barrier uh, to the worship of God and to love and to concern. If we have had horrible divorces and horrible falling outs, and if there has been uh, accusations flying back and forth, could you help us, Lord, to heal the hurts and to make things right and to return the hearts of the children to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children, lest I come and smite the land with a curse, you said in the book of Malachi. We don't want that, Lord. What we want is blessing. What we want is fruitfulness. What we want is love, mercy, forgiveness, reconciliation. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Mother's Day. Here we are in May, obviously Mother's Day, and we'll have a special message concerning what it means biblically to be a mother and to be a parent uh, and what the Bible requires of us in this area. So I've entitled this special message, The Command with Promise. I say it that way because Paul the Apostle in Ephesians says this is the first command in the Ten Commandments 
that with it, a promise is attached. And the promise is, if you honor your father and your mother, you will have a long life and things will go well for you. So we're going to explore that. So let's pray together as we look at this. Lord, this is a basic foundational teaching that you laid down in, in the law long, long ago. Indeed, the implications reach back into heaven, for you are our Father in heaven. Help us to understand, Lord, that if we grasp the concept of honoring and treating rightly the people in our lives who are authority figures, who are more than authority figures, who are our, who are our parents, our progenitors, that you show us how to do it and you expect us to follow through with it because so much hinges upon what happens in this arena. We know there's been many failures and many breakdowns in the area of parenting, in mothering and fathering, in marriage and in relationships of uh, daughters and sons and fathers and sons and mothers and daughters. We just pray that no matter where we're at in the time that we live, that we could always return to the ideal. And the ideal is perfect. And even though we may not be living in the ideal, we may be uh, in a single parent home, we may be widowed, we may be abandoned, we may not know our mother or our father, um, they may have abandoned us. Help us, Lord, to see what you say in scriptures about this and to take it to heart and live it out. In Jesus' name, amen. So follow along with me in your sermon outline. The first command of the second tablet. There's two tablets of the Ten Commandments. The first commandment in the second tablet is honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord is giving you. So to honor your father and mother is the first human lateral commandment given by God to the children of Israel. And thereby it is a, an expectation across the board to all people. In the first tablet, all of those commands have to do with our relationship with God, so they are vertical. This one is a lateral, horizontal command about how we treat each other, and God begins with the most basic human relationship, mother and father and child. Now, it doesn't stop there. It doesn't mean that when you're with your mom and dad, you honor them, and once you've grown up, you don't have to think about it. It's much deeper than that, and I'll try to show you that today. The Lord Jesus himself confirmed this commandment. He confirmed it in his public ministry. In Mark chapter 10, a man ran up to Jesus and fell on his knees before Jesus and said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered, You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, and do not give false testimony. Do not defraud and then the last one is, honor your father and mother. So he confirms these commandments, okay? And by the way, he confirms the second tablet of the Ten Commandments. He doesn't mention the first tablet, and there's a reason for that in this particular story, not in this message, because this man had no issue with following these lateral commands of treating his mom and dad rightly and treating his fellow man correctly. But he did have a problem in his vertical relationship with God. He had trouble putting God first. In the chapter that talks about this, Jesus is told by this man, teacher, all of these things I kept since I was a boy. I've, I've honored my mom and dad. I've, I... I do treat my fellow human rightly as far as I know how, as far as the law instructs me to. Then it says this, Jesus looked at him and loved him. So the Lord loves the people that obey the command to honor your father and your mother. He loves, he loves people that obey this command or any of his commands. But it's really important to see this. 
The Lord loves people who obey the command. If you want the love of God in your life, you have to be in agreement with what he says is right and what he says is wrong. As it says in the book of Amos, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? If you want to have a walk with God, you must accept what God says is right and what God says is wrong. One thing you lack, Jesus said to this man, go and sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. So the man has this ability to comply with the horizontal commands in the second tablet. But when it comes to this, it says, I, don't, I didn't include this in this passage, but it says that the man went away with his face downcast because he had much wealth. He couldn't let go of things and put God first. He could treat people well. He could support them uh, and be compassionate to them and maybe even help them out from time to time. But when it came to leaving everything and following God, he couldn't do it. And that's why Jesus started with a second tablet, because he knew that this man had, had no issues with that. But when it came to the crux of the matter, the first question that he asked was, how do I get eternal life? He had an innate hunger inside of his heart that, okay, I live pretty good with people around me, but there's something missing with me and God. And I need that. I know I do. I want eternal life. I want to make sure I have it. And Jesus tells him, just let go of it all. Let go of all of it. Give it away and follow me. Now, I know that uh, that admonition is something that very few people have ever followed through with. Um, but you can have that attitude. Zacchaeus, the short little rich guy that I talked about some weeks ago, he said, I'll, I'll give anything back to people if I've defrauded them, you know, four times over. Um, anything I have, I share with people. You, it's in the attitude. If you are holding on to your stuff, and that's all that matters to you is holding on to it, then it's got a hold of you instead of the other way around. Let go of it. Give it to God. Even if you still manage it, if you still take care of it, uh, give it to God. Use it for God. Use your car for God. Use your house for God. Use your money for God. Use everything that you have for God, and God will bless you for it. And put God first. The Lord loves those who obey the command. But the command that we're focusing on, in on today is honor your father and your mother. And when you do this, the Lord will love you. Now, the Lord kept this command personally. He didn't just talk about it intellectually or academically. He actually did it. And he did this even as he was dying for us. While he was on the cross, while he was becoming, if you will, the sin bearer, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. While he was doing that, he still had time to stop and honor his mother. Watch. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, that would be his aunt, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here's your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his house. What's going on here? As the eldest son, Jesus had responsibility for his widowed mother. We think that Mary was widowed because Joseph is never mentioned in the area of the crucifixion accounts. So we think that he had passed away. And Jesus, as the eldest son, had primary responsibility for the care of his mother. So he gives that care to one of his disciples. Even though he had brothers, James and others who are mentioned, they had not yet given their hearts to the Lord. So he trusted a man that had given his heart to the Lord, John the Apostle. And John the Apostle took Mary into his home and took care of her. So that issue was taken care of. The Lord kept that, honor your mother and honor your father. He kept that. He did it even as he was dying. When people say, I don't have time for, you know, visiting the, the old folks in the old folks home or my mom or my grandma, I don't have time. Um, if Jesus had time, 
to take care of his mother's situation while he was dying for the sins of the world, then you have time too. The apostles confirm this teaching of honoring your father and your mother as church doctrine. It's a foundational belief of Christendom as well, not just in the Ten Commandments of the Jewish law, but it translated and transferred into the new covenant of the Christian church. The Apostle Paul, Ephesians 6. Honor your father and your mother, he says. This is the first commandment in the Ten with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on the earth. The longer I live life, the more I realize that this is more than just a suggestion. I really think that a lot of people who have trouble in life and struggle has to do with the way they've dealt with family, the way they've dealt with mothers and fathers and grandparents, because the inferred in the father and mother is not just mom and dad. It's also mom's mom, mom's dad, dad's dad, dad's mom. It's your family. Honor towards your family. If you don't have honor for your own family, how can you honor God? Because that's where the devil went wrong with God. He desired to usurp the authority and position of God the Father and became a being who was dishonoring our Father in heaven. He cannot honor our Father in heaven. But we can. We can honor our Father in heaven by honoring our earthly father and mother. I know that there are those who may say, well, I was adopted, or uh, my father and my mother abandoned me, or they don't seem worthy of it. They are, they're drunks, they're, they're drug addicts, they're, they're not worthy of my honor. Interesting to me that in the commandment concerning this issue, there are no exceptions mentioned. Honor them if they're nice parents. Honor your mom and dad if they treated you nice when you were a kid, if they treated you nice when you were an adult. I have never seen an exception to the rule in the scriptures. Yes, I think human beings have made up exceptions where they say, well, if your parent is this or that, then they don't deserve your respect. The Bible never gives us that, um, that kind of a, an excuse. The Bible simply says to honor them. Why? I think because later on in the New Testament, the Apostle Peter says that if you obey the master who mistreats you, then you will receive commendation from God. That is, you may have a parent or a situation in a family life where it is not what it's supposed to be. But if you live in that situation in a way that is right, God will honor you. There's plenty of examples of that in human history and in the scriptures. There was a woman who was married to a man that was called a fool. His name was Nabal. This is in the account of David the king while he was fleeing for his life from uh, King Saul. David had been taking care of Nabal's flocks out in the, in the wild and guarding his shepherds from being raided. And, and he expected some kind of a return for that. And the man just totally dissed him. And David was about to go in and take it all by force. But the wife, his, her name was Abigail, she went to David secretly and gave him supply and payment for all of the protection and said that she understood that her husband was problematic, but she wanted to make sure that David was okay. And David was pacified and he did not take his men and take everything by force. And indeed, later on, Nabal, the man, actually dies, and Abigail ends up being able to be married to none other, none other than King David himself. You may live in a family and be in a marriage or be in a situation where it's not ideal, where the people that you're in association with in relatives' way, in the way of being related physically, there's problems. Well, I can say this, that if you bear up under that, and if you do the right thing by them all, and you treat them rightly and kindly and lovingly, and give them honor even if they don't deserve the honor, God notices that, and God will reward you. He will reward you. I could testify of this personally, okay? 
I won't give you the stories, but I'll, I'll tell you that it does work. Um, even when you have difficult family situations, do the right thing, always do the right thing, go the extra mile, turn the other cheek, love your brother, love your enemy, even if they're people that you think are in your own family. God will support you. And it says here, he will give you a long life and it will go well with you. It being life. Life will go well with you. God will bless you. He will help you. God himself expects honor. That's why I said that this commandment harkens back to our Father in heaven. If you cannot honor earthly parents, how can you expect to honor the Almighty God? Everyone's always second-guessing God. Everyone's always coming up with their own interpretation of the way God should do things and God should orchestrate life. But once you get to a place where you say, you know what, God, you're God. You're on the throne. I'm not. I honor you. I don't understand everything that you do or why or how. But I honor you, I respect you, and I serve you anyway. God honors that. Watch. Malachi chapter 1, a son honors his father. This is God speaking in the first person to the people of Israel through the prophet Malachi. A son honors his father, and a servant honors his master. If I am a spiritual father, if I am your father in heaven, where is the honor that is due to me as your father and your God? Where's my honor? If I am a master, where's the respect that's due to me, says the Lord Almighty. So we see here that God is expecting honor. Why does he expect it? Is it because he's egocentric or is it because he gets hurt feelings if people don't honor him? He may get hurt feelings because we are created in his image and his feelings were hurt right before the Noahic flood where it says that he was grieved in his heart that man had become completely corrupted and wicked and it, was, it grieved him that he had made man on the earth. So yes, he does get his feelings hurt. But more than that, why does he expect honor? It's because it's good for us. Because when we honor our parents, our boss, the cop on the beat, our teacher, our employer, then it makes everybody's life better. When we do not honor that, everybody's life becomes more chaotic because nobody honors anyone, even if they deserve the honor. And that's a sad commentary for our culture now in our day and age, actually, because we're, we're in a place where there's hardly any of this left. And I'm wondering where it's going to go and how long it can continue to go on before it falls in on itself. That's not to be negative. It's just that I know that honor of the authority figures in our lives and the people that um, should be honored. If we do not do that, then it's going to be destructive. Honor means material support. When I first began to teach this and see this in the scriptures, I was quite amazed at it because honor to me in the past meant, you know, say, hey, mom, hey, dad, how you doing? Send them a card. Um, you know, tell them you like them, you love them, stuff like that. And you should do that, obviously. That goes without saying. However, honor in the scripture means much more than that. It is material support. It is that when they are elderly, when they are unable, when they are sickly, when they are, they need financial support, they need uh, personal uh, assistance. So many times uh, our culture has decided to turn towards caregivers instead of doing the care ourselves. Well, I've got a career. I've got kids. I don't have time. I think that we need to rethink those things because how you know, many of you see on um, uh, ads all the time, was your loved one hurt in a, in a long care uh, facility, long-term care facility, and call us and we'll get the settlement that you want because you cannot entrust care of your kids or your family to strangers. You can't do it. Money cannot buy that love. Only you can love your mom, your dad, your grandpa, your grandma, your kid. You're the only one that can love them. You can't buy that love. It has to come from you. Jesus replied to the Pharisees who were criticizing him for one of the things his disciples were doing. 
He replies to them, why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God has said this, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses his father or mother must be put to death. So Jesus is featuring again this commandment, the second tablet, first commandment. Honor your father and your mother. And even to curse your father and mother is a death penalty offense. Why? Why is that so serious? I believe that God put that seriously there because if people are culturally allowed to diss their own family, disrespect and curse their own mom and dad, then that person, that person is a dangerous person. That person is going to bring ruin on everybody. Because if they cannot respect their own mother and father, how can they respect anyone around them, including themselves? That's why God put it as a death penalty, because if they can't respect their own mother and father, how can they respect God who saves the soul? So it's a, it's a death penalty spiritually to not have honor and respect and concern for your own mother and father. He goes on to say, but you, the, the interpreters of scriptures at the time that Jesus came, you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever help you might have received from me is a gift I devote it to God. He is not to honor his father with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition, you hypocrites. What's going on here? The leadership, spiritual leadership of the people of, of Israel at the time of Christ on earth said in their interpretations of the Mosaic law to people, look, if you want to give money to us at the temple, at the synagogue, give it to us. But the Bible says I got to take care of mom and dad and I barely got enough to make my ends meet. And this was meant for my mom and dad. Well, that's okay. That's okay, guys. We've got a little loophole for you. Um, if you devote this to God, then it does, it frees you from the, the command of honor your father and mother by supporting them with that money. You can give it to us instead. And Jesus calls them hypocrites. And inferred in this teaching, by the way, is that Jesus and the Jewish people understood that honoring mom and dad meant material, financial support, personal support. It does cost to take care of mom and dad. It does cost to be involved in their lives when they're elderly. It costs, but it's worth it. It's worth it. I'm telling you, it's worth it because I'm experiencing that right now. And the things I've been learning through it are best, better for me than anything else that I've learned. Faith is proven in the application of honor your father and mother. It's proven. If you have faith, if you say you believe in God, if you say you're a Christian, if you honor your father and mother, you prove it. Watch. In 1 Timothy, Paul says, if a widow has children or grandchildren, they should first learn to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and repaying their parents and grandparents for this is pleasing to God. So again, honor thy father and mother. Does it mean just mom and dad? It means grandparents as well. Interesting. It means your family. It means you should be concerned about your family. Why? Why? Because it is your primary responsibility. That's why. And when you do this, it proves whether you are believer or not. And that's what Paul says here. Put your faith into practice. In other words, if people don't do this, it says failure in this reveals actual paganism of the worst sort. This compared to pagans who are pagans from their pagan religion. Watch. If anyone does not provide for his relatives, and that means provide financially and materially and with physical support. If you don't provide for your family, relatives, it says here in 1 Timothy 5.8, and especially for his immediate family. So interesting that the extended family is inferred in this as well. How's your uncle doing? How's your cousin doing? How's, how's the extended family doing? Are they begging in the streets? Are they down and out? Shouldn't you be concerned about them? They have denied the faith, and they're worse than a pagan unbeliever. So failure to have this concern of one, honor your father and mother, look out for your family as much as you know how to look out for them. Then if you don't do this, then you have denied Christian faith. The end times, 
the end times, which we are in, are characterized by parental disrespect. We're living in it now. When I was growing up, if you didn't get up when the older folks walked in and offer them your chair and ask them if they wanted something to drink and took their hat and their coat and hung it up, you were in trouble. If I went to school and I got in trouble with a teacher and the teacher told my dad, um, the teacher didn't get in trouble, I did. Um, it's just something that we've lost. It used to be that people, young people, would say, yes, sir, no, sir, and let the old person go through the door first. Now they barge right in front of them. There seems to be no concern anymore for respect. And I'm not complaining. I'm only crying out in the desert that we need to return to this. We need to start expecting this and instilling this in our children, in our grandchildren. We need to expect it by saying, no, you need to talk to me this way, not that way. I'm not your old buddy, your old pal. I'm your dad. I'm your grandpa. I'm your uncle. And, and address me that way. Because when you teach respect, it brings respect to everything and everyone. In 2 Timothy, in the last days, Paul the Apostle says, difficult times will come. And he actually says this, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit says, difficult times will come. People will be lovers of selves, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to their parents. I don't care what my folks think. I don't care what my family thinks. I'm going to do this ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. So honor thy father and thy mother. It's eroded. It's being eroded. It continues to be eroded, but you can stop it by you being one of the people in this world who commits to, you know what? I don't care what the rest of the world is doing. I'm still going to do life the way God wants me to do life. Now, the greatest honor that you can bestow on your family is this. Follow God. Follow the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Commit your life to the Lord. Because then you won't be a problem child in the family. People won't have to wonder, what happened to so-and-so? Did he drink himself to death? Did, he, did she drug herself to death? Is she out in the streets? Is he out in the streets? If you're following the Lord, it takes away that concern that parents and grandparents and uncles and aunts and cousins have for, for the problem people in the family. Once you give your life to the Lord, it makes everybody breathe a sigh of relief. When Jesus drove out thousands of demons from the one man in, in the cemetery across the Sea of Galilee, he tells them, go back and tell your family the great things that God has done for you. In other words, now that the man is right with God, they don't have to worry about him anymore. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. And he replied to them, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my brothers and my mother, for whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So we need to understand that if we're going to honor our family, our mother, our father, our heritage, the first and most important thing that uh, that requires is give your heart to the Lord. By giving your heart to the Lord, you confirm everything that your family hopefully holds to. Now, if you grew up in a family that didn't believe in the Lord, you're still not exempted from honoring them, caring about them, loving them, praying for them, because God expects that no matter what. But start by honoring God. Honor your Father in heaven, and then He will straighten out the rest of the honor issues and the needs that you have to address in your circle of friends and family. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the admonitions of scriptures. Some of these admonitions are very difficult, especially for people who have been abused, by family members even, by fathers and mothers perhaps. So help us to understand how to do these things how to honor in a way that is pleasing in your sight. We pray that you'll use our lives, and no matter what our family's been, or what its history is, or how dysfunctional we have lived in it, help us to bring the sanity of the gospel and the love of God back into the family. For we do today honor our mothers, for it is called Mother's Day. But we don't want to just do this once a year. 
We want to live our lives every day this way. Honor our father and mother. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being a part of our virtual service at Grace Community Church here today. We really do consider you family. We really pray that everything's going well in your life. And just know that if you do need prayer, you can contact the church and send in a prayer request. And um, we appreciate the contribution and the support for these videos. It really has been a blessing. I can't tell you how many people we've met out in the community that have talked about the impact it's had on their life. So thank you so much for your support. Please feel free to like our page and subscribe and share with friends and family. We can't wait to see you next time. Thank you.